Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. So I am super excited about this unboxing I have for you today. Ever since I got an Instant Pot, way back when, whenever that was, um, I have never since then desired to have a slow cooker until Instant Pot came out with what I consider to be like the best looking slow cooker I have ever seen. And so they roped me in to purchasing this new product that they have. It's not called a slow cooker, but that's what I think it's the most like. I ordered this back over the holidays when it was on sale and um, it has been sitting waiting for me to unbox it for so long and I just haven't been able to get to it. But I'm super excited to do it today. I got the red version um, back when I ordered it the red version was the only version available. Now they have a black and a beautiful blue version. And once I saw the blue version, I was like, why, why didn't I wait to order? But the deed was already done. So I have the red version, but there are color options for those of you that are interested in that. I'm super excited to get this thing out of the box. So let's go ahead and get it open and see what it looks like. So first of all, I think this octagonal box is super, super cute. I love the packaging. Oops. Here we go. Oh, I was wondering about cooking Dutch oven bread in here. I used to do that for the family a lot. I was wondering if that would be possible in this, which is very cool. All right, got some paperwork here. Discover amazing. Safety, maintenance, and warranty. Get started. Dutch oven, precision Dutch oven. Oh, and it came with recipes. They have stopped putting recipe books in a lot of their products, especially Instant Pots and air fryers, I think, um, because they're moving towards online recipes. But this came with an actual recipe book, which I'm sure lots of people will be very excited about. Sicilian fish stew, fettuccine, fettuccine bolognese, uh, ooh, braised Chinese style spare ribs. Those look really good. Ooh, family chicken dinner, cooking a whole chicken in there. Ah, oh, that's a, oh, here we go. This is what I was thinking of. Almost no need bread. Yeah, I was wondering about doing baking in this because baking in D Dutch ovens is a very popular thing, like in the oven. Uh, but I was wondering if it would work um, on the, you know, the base here as well. And of course, you can use the Dutch oven that comes in this in your regular oven or on your stovetop as well. That's one thing that really sold me on this is that it's extremely versatile and I could replace the Dutch oven that I have with this one and still be able to use it for all the same things that I use it for, but then also have the option of using it on the base like a slow cooker. Just seemed like a really great option. Here is the lid. It says instant on there. out the Dutch oven part first. So you can see it just looks like a regular Dutch oven and you can use it for all the things and all the ways that you would use a regular Dutch oven. But then also in the base, I just love that so much. Okay, some silicone handles, that is very cool. I like that a lot. I like that they're removable so you can wash them and stuff. That is very neat, and they say instant on there. I guess they go on like that. Also comes with a silicone mat that also says instant. The perfect size for this to fit on, very handy. And here is the base. Inside looks similar to an Instant Pot inside. So Instant Pots themselves um, have gotten a really bad rap for good reason on their slow cooker function. And the main reason for that is that the heat in an Instant Pot comes from the bottom, 
only. And so if you have a lot of soup or broth or whatever in your pot, it's very hard to get a good temperature for the whole pot when you're slow cooking. It's totally fine when you're pressure cooking because there's it's very high heat, so it gets everything to a rolling boil. But uh, for slow cooking, it's just not ideal. The stuff at the bottom cooks more than the stuff at the top, and it's just never been a great option in an instant pot. But with the Dutch oven, the way that the um, cast iron holds the heat, you're gonna be getting heat from everywhere in the Dutch oven, including the sides, which is how a slow cooker works. And that's why slow cookers are always so superior to instant pots for slow cooker recipes. So I think this is gonna be an amazing slow cooker. And then having the versatility of using the Dutch oven any other way that you would ever use a Dutch oven, it makes this product really unique and really, really cool. So that just fits down in there like that. And it's got the knob and the face. And I am going to look at the manual real quick and see what I need to do like as an initial test run see if they have that for this um, model, and we will get it plugged in and see how it works. So there was no initial test run on this, like um, the Instant Pots and the air fryers have, um, just said to clean you know, the pot, of course. One interesting thing in the manual is these are not supposed to stay on during cooking here or on the stovetop or in the oven. It's just supposed to be used like a hot pad if I needed to move the Dutch oven out of here. That's what those are for. So let's just get this plugged in and we'll look at the different settings and features. What a fun little sound. There's my lid. One thing I'm noticing here is the display is not very bright. Um, it's not, unless when I touch something, nope, it stays pretty dull. Other models that they have of Instant Pots and air fryers it's like they shine, it's like a light. But these ones are pretty light to read, so that's interesting. All right, so we have sear, saute, slow cook, braise, and manual mode. And then we have keep warm and temp time. So when I press one of the settings or the modes, then the start and the cancel um, pop up. And I can toggle between the temperature, let's see, the time. Um, oh, and then I press this to lock in the time. Oh, when I, maybe I can't change the temperature when it's on the setting. I was thinking I could toggle to the temperature, but no, apparently not. But if I go to braise, it doesn't have a temperature setting. Interesting. When I go to slow cook, it doesn't have a temperature setting. But let's see, when I go to manual mode, Oh, it can go between 77 and 203. Okay, that's cool. That's where you can change the temperature. I like having the degrees where you can just change the temperature to whatever degree you would like rather than like a high, low, or one, two, three, four, or whatever. Then you can toggle over to the time and change that. I do have to say I love the sounds that this is making, they're so unannoying. <laughs> On the um, Instant Pot Pro, the button or the noises were so obnoxious. I loved the model of Instant Pot, but the sounds were just so, so bad. I am loving how nice these beeps are. That is definitely a win. All right, let's see. I'm gonna go to Sear Saute and just all right, it's on 20 minutes at 400. I'm just gonna hit start and it goes into the preheating mode. So if I were gonna be making a soup and wanted to um, like saute my onions and stuff, I imagine this is what I would use. And then of course you can switch over to like braising or slow cooking. So in the manual here, they have a page for each of the settings. So sear saute, um, it defaults to 20 minutes. You can go down to 10 minutes or up to an hour max. And then the temperature is just 400. That's all, since it's a sear setting, you want it to be as hot as possible. And then the braise setting, it defaults to two hours, but you can go down to one hour or all the way up to four hours. And then the temperature that it cooks at, 230 if you're browning. 185 to 205 if you're simmering. And the instructions on how to braise. 
more. Oh, and then slow cook down here. You can do three hours to 12 hours for the slow cook setting. And the temperature default is 203. And there's no minimum and no maximum. So it looks like there's just one slow cook temperature. Um, typically on slow cookers, you have a high and a low, sometimes a medium. So that's interesting that they only put one temperature in there. But of course, you can use the manual mode, I suppose, if you wanted to have it lower. And then manual mode, it can go all the way up to 12 hours. So you can just use the manual mode as a slow cook if you want to be able to adjust the temperature. You can go from 77 to 203. Manual mode 2. Okay, so this is for slow cooking, sous vide, or dough proofing at a lower temperature with longer cook times. And then manual mode two for faster cooking at higher temperatures with shorter cook times. So you can only do three hours on manual mode two. Temperature between 212 and 400 degrees. Okay, that's interesting. I think this is a typo. It says how to cool in manual mode, but it, I think it means it should say how to cook in manual mode. How funny. And then the last mode is the keep warm mode. So after foods have cooked, you can just keep them warm until they're ready to serve. So this is still preheating here. Oh, it has a little um, display where it shows where you are in the process. So we're getting close to the cooking time. Since I'm not gonna be cooking anything right now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. So now it's on a uh, standby mode and I'm gonna try turning the sound off. So when in standby mode, press and hold the time temp and keep warm buttons until display shows um, sound off. Come on, any second. Oh, there we go. Sound off. And we'll try it again to turn the sound back on. There we go. Sound is back on. So that comes in handy um, when you're, you know, cooking something on slow cook overnight and you don't want it to be beeping at, you know, 3 a.m. or something. So that comes in handy to be able to turn the sounds off. Although the sounds on this are so minimal and enjoyable that it's not really that big of a deal. Um, you can also switch to Celsius uh, between Fahrenheit and Celsius. So it says um, to do that, all you do is press and hold the time temp button until it switches. There we go, temp unit Celsius. And let's see, if we go into manual mode, there it goes 25 degrees Celsius to 95 degrees Celsius. And then if I wanna switch it back, just hold it. There we go temp unit Fahrenheit. So that is the unboxing for the Instant Precision Dutch Oven. I am planning on using this in some of my upcoming soup and bread of the week videos. That is a series that I've been working on the last month or so and I'm really enjoying and I'm excited to continue it on here through the winter and through the spring. So if you wanna see this in action, definitely tune in to those videos. I hope you guys are all doing really great and I will see you again in another video.